Every week there's something different. Here we go. Today uh, we are going to look at the Emperor Trajan. Now after you look at the slideshow, and you probably want to watch the video too because I'll go into a lot more depth in the video. But after you look at the slideshow and video, uh, I do want you to answer what is your favorite man-made monument and who or what does that monument celebrate? If you want to go for that extension, get some extra credit, develop, develop a slideshow that gives me a better, more in-depth look at the importance of your monument. Okay, Trajan. Real quick, I did want to review this a little bit, and I didn't, when we looked at Vespasian last week, I didn't go into any detail about the three emperors that followed in quick succession after Nero. That was Galba, Otho. Otho, um, Nero actually stole one of his wives and married her. And then Aulus Vitalis, Vitalius. But then when we go down, we go through Vespasian and his sons, and then we get to Trajan. Now, Trajan was a general that served with Vespasian and his sons over in the Jewish wars. You can probably hear my dog drinking water. Lola, quiet on the set. But he was the first emperor to come from Spain. He was not, he was Roman, but his family had moved to Spain and I believe his dad was a governor or um, ran some of the Spanish colonies. Now, when Trajan was selected emperor, and I'm going to say he was selected emperor, uh, the Senate and the armies supported him being emperor. But when uh, Nerva died, they looked around to see who would be the next acceptable emperor, and they came up with Trajan. And he was at war out in Dacia, and Dacia is out in this region here, just off the, the uh, Danube River. But... Um, he came back, I think a couple years after he was selected emperor, and he increased the daily dole. Now, we talked about populist emperors in the past, and increasing the dole, helping the poor people, will help you your um, image with those poor people. Now, he expanded the empire into Dacia, Arabia, Mesopotamia. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this is not just in the ancient world, but when countries' empires expand, Frequently, they're doing it for economic reasons. When the Japanese attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor, it was for economic reasons. They needed the raw goods that the Americans had, that the Chinese had, and they also needed to get into um, the South China Sea where there was oil, rubber, all those things. With Trajan, he attacked Dacia, Arabia, and Mesopotamia because he needed the wealth from those empires. And he brought that back when he used those spoils of war to build. Okay, now building is very important. Uh, and the week at the glance, I say that building shows hope. It shows that you are growing. It shows um, quite a bit. If you are, if you've lost hope in the future, you're not going to build. Have you ever been to a ghost town? Okay, there are ghost towns all across the American West. Uh, when I was a little kid up in Alaska, we went to a few. I wouldn't even call them a town. But there were abandoned mining sites, abandoned uh, structures that were out there and about. And you know, when you lose hope, you stop building. You stop. You just move away. But when you build, and when you build large things, it shows that your economy, your people, you have hope, and you're moving on. Now, another thing he did is he created, and this is something that is brand new. He but he created the alimenta, and he supported small or young poor children. Um, up before this time, they wouldn't have that. Now, in our culture, we have reintroduced lunch, okay? And so, and we do also serve some of our poor people uh, through different social programs. Um, but he started to get that alimenta, which would help those poor people, or poor kids in particular, um, live and move on. Now, he did build uh, several baths and aqueducts, and then what we're going to focus on today is he created a new forum and market, okay? Now, the forum that he built, the forum is uh, that marketplace. It is a combination of buildings. It's not just the market. But when you look up here, there is Trajan's Market, okay? And we'll see some pictures of that coming up. It is a semi-sickle uh, built in the side of a hill. Um, building in this time frame, 
uh, Rome was pretty tight. And so he actually had to excavate a hill. And the hill was about 125 feet tall, and it was primarily rock. But he took his slaves, and they carved out the hillside and put this in its place. Uh, you don't remember this, but way, way, way back when, when they put our Safeway in on Bishop Boulevard, they carved out the hillside and uh, they used dynamite and they blasted it out and it would rumble Lincoln Middle School here and there. It was interesting. Okay, now Trajan's Column. That's one thing we'll see too down here in that lower left hand side, Trajan's Column. And we'll talk about that too in a minute. Now, the other thing is that Basilica. Okay, Rome had several basilicas, and a basilica is a large oblong hall or building with double colonnades and a semicircular apse um, used in ancient Rome as a court of law or for public assemblies. Okay, when Christians came along, and we'll look at Christians in the next couple of weeks, when they came along, they took that basilica and used it as the footprint for their churches. If you go to Rome nowadays, you will see. Trajan's Market. Okay, it is still there. Uh, but out here in front of Trajan's Market, it is basically a field and a lot of wild cats. You'll see a lot of these colonnades that are broken off and down. Uh, but you'll also see Trajan's Column. It still stands. And it's fascinating to go see, that, see it all there. Now, this is a picture. Remember the model we saw in that video right before we left school? Uh, this is the model of Trajan's Market with our Trajan's Forum. Here is that seven story um, marketplace. Here's his basilica. And right here, that little column up there, 125 tall, is his uh, column. Now, I believe when they blasted out this hill, no dynamite like we use the Safeway. But when we used, we, when the Christian used slaves to blast out this hill, they dug through 125 feet of rock uh, to flatten this area out. I don't know if this ridge came across all the way across. Um, this building here, I believe, is Jupiter's Temple. Um, I do know that uh, Mussolini, and we looked at that earlier too, he built his capital up here. The other form is off underneath my picture over here. And um, off the screen, that way would be the Colosseum. Now, this is the picture of Trajan's Market. Um, I have not been in it. I did walk by it, uh, and I would love to go in it someday and, and see what it looks like. But they had small stores down the bottom floor. They had warehouses, different things. You go here and buy, buy what you needed. Uh, side note, totally off topic. I believe this building right here is a church that houses, uh, I think it's uh, Peter and Piccoli, Peter and Change. Uh, if you ever want to go see some great artwork, go to the churches in Rome. Uh, there's a Michelangelo uh, statue, I believe, of Moses in that church, which is just phenomenal. And it's something you can get up and personal with. Um, it's not a museum, so you don't have to pay fee, um, the entrance fee. But the churches in Rome are just amazing to go look at. Okay, Trajan's Column. There it is, 125 feet tall. And it stands next to what used to be that um, basilica. And like I said, you have some columns around it that used to house that um, basilica. And what is amazing is the size of this. And it is 125 feet tall. Now, around the exterior of the column is a scene carved into this column uh, that shows his conquering of Dacia. Okay, and uh, you see the soldiers out there. You see all this amazing work. Um, I don't know if you can still walk up to the top of the column. This is, it was built probably about 110 CE. So it is 1910 years old. So it's quite old, um, but it looks in a remarkable shape and people used to be able to walk to the top. Now today, um, what I would like you to do, there's my sources, uh, go through and think about what your favorite monument is. Several years ago, 
my wife and family, we went to Astoria Column. And I was amazed to find out it is 125 feet tall as well. Same size as Trajan's Column. Um, now, when you look at that monument, who does it celebrate? What does it celebrate? Um, why is it important? Now, at first, when I get, came up with this idea, I was going, I do not want a war monument. But Trajan's Column is a war monument. So think about um, monuments that you think are really cool and tell me why it's important, what you like about it. If you want to do the extension, dig deeper. Develop that slideshow and show me why that, that um, project or why that monument is important. Have a good week and I will talk to you guys later.